welcome to episode 71 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 70, our topic was sales, customer stratification. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 10 to 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses disruptive marketing. Our guest is Quinn Curtis, Chief Marketing Officer at Disruptive Advertising, based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. With over 15 years of experience in business, branding, and marketing strategies, Quinn encourages the joy of marketing. Her approach of drawing out the genius and magic in those she works with builds strong systems and processes, allowing maximum creativity and passion in her teams. The disruptive team has a remarkable track record of managing over $450 million in annual ad spend for their clients. Apart from her work, Quinn is a mother of five children and enjoys exploring the world, painting, drawing, and reading fairy tales to her children. Let's welcome Quinn Curtis. Quinn, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. I'm so happy to be here. Well, thanks for joining us today. Quinn, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in becoming the chief marketing officer at Disruptive Advertising? Oh, goodness. Well, I came into marketing through the very, very back door um, in that I had grown up in a very religious type of home where it was very orthodox. And so I was taught that I couldn't have a career path. And and so it was very tricky. And, and as I was a young mom trying to make ends meet, I just kept feeling this pull to creating a business or doing certain things. And so thankfully, we had a lot of financial struggles then. And that kind of opened the door that I had a little bit of permission to play there. And I just fell in love with it right away. So I dug in deep there, learned everything I possibly could, was very aggressive in getting a lot of education in marketing and in business and just figuring out this whole newer space at that time of digital marketing and um, was quite successful with my own businesses at the time and then led and directed marketing for other businesses after that and, and found that almost that guerrilla marketing scrappiness that I had had in even getting my education was a real asset to then go and help businesses really think about their marketing in a more out of the box way to help them get some better results. And so did that for quite a few years, leading marketing efforts for various businesses, and then wanted to try my own thing again. So I started my own branding and marketing agency that was just a little boutique agency and ran and did that for about six years. And then got this opportunity to come and work with Disruptive just over a year ago. And as somebody who loves marketing and loves sales, it felt like an opportunity I couldn't resist to be able to be the marketing leader and sales leader at the company, but also to be able to impact so many talented, young, emerging marketers and expert level marketers within the company since it's a marketing agency as well. So it's a kind of rambling path, but I'm so happy to be here and, and really felt like I've found my stride. That's a great story, Quinn. So many of us have a rambling path <laughs> where we got, we didn't, it wasn't a straight line for almost all of us. That's a good point. Our topic today is disruptive marketing. How do you inspire marketers to create engaging marketing that reaches and converts clients? I think the big differentiator of something that is disruptive, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. One of the ways, which I think is more the normal way people look at it, is more that shock and awe factor of, oh my gosh, let's stop the scroll and let's put something shocking out there. I feel like a lot of the Super Bowl advertising this past year kind of felt like that, where it was lots of fast movement and lots of changing scenes very quickly, which can be disruptive. It can also not necessarily really resonate like what you're asking. And so that's where I think the real heart of truly disruptive marketing, marketing that leads someone to not just like stop what they're doing and watch a screen or watch what the ad is is showing them, but to actually engage with the brand and even purchase 
from the brand and ideally become a raving fan of the brand, that requires a much deeper emotional connection with the consumer. And so that's where I like to see the kind of disruptive marketing I like to teach and and direct my teams with, I like to call it meaningful marketing instead. So making sure that it is actually connecting with the person on the other side of the screen instead of just talking at them. And so this requires you to really understand your target market a lot better than I think a lot of marketers typically have. I think that uh, the way that we've looked at it a lot is like the demographic kind of a view where it's, okay, it's moms and they're between the ages of 30 and 40 and they have kids that are in soccer. And like, we have these large general groups of people that we've tried to market to in the past, but more and more so to really capture the heart of your consumer, of your client that you're going after. I think you have to understand so much more so what is what are they really wanting and how is your product or your service actually providing a true solution to them and making their life better? And when you get some more of that more emotional or, or even psychographic type of data about your target market, that's where you're, when you apply that to your market, it, marketing, it becomes highly disruptive in their good way. I think you've already answered this next question. How do you differentiate your offering in a saturated marketing market? Well, I mean, it's absolutely uses some of those similar principles. Like I keep thinking of the, there's this great t-shirt brand. I want to call it Manly Tees, for example. They do a great job of this. They were like a white t-shirt kind of a brand in an already very saturated t-shirt kind of zone. Like that's not a new product. There's nothing different or special, but with their marketing, they really got to the heart of what men were looking for in those t-shirts that they wanted to be comfortable, but they wanted to still look attractive. They wanted to be able to wear it wherever and hopefully find a girlfriend or whatever it might be. And they channeled all of their marketing into this t-shirt helps you get that. And they have hilarious, amazing ads that have just done a great job of really like exploding their business as well as reaching a market that is insanely saturated. And so I think that that's where as marketers and business anybody in business, we have to be thinking more so about how our product or service actually solves a problem and trying to stand out there and getting even more clever and creative to say, hey, here's the solution than I believe we've ever had to in the past in order to stand out. We're speaking with Quinn Curtis, Chief Marketing Officer at Disruptive Advertising. Quinn, what are some of the tricks to stay in the zone more frequently and still have fun with work? Ooh, favorite topic. Um, this is a zone I like to call inflow and on fire that you are, are feeling that way. So I think some of the tricks that I've seen is, is one of the biggest things that gets us out of our zone is notifications and interruptions. And so the more that we can minimize those, the more that helps us stay more in the zone. And so, for example, removing notifications from your phone for email, absolutely, and all of your social networks, and then even turning your phone on silent during work hours and or having another way of letting people get a hold of you if there is an emergency. We have to get a little bit creative about, uh, creative about some of that, but I think those are key fundamental pieces that help us. The other thing, though, is just really setting up your day to structure it towards productivity and creativity, making sure that you have blocked out time set for you know, working through things, having that creative time blocked in your day instead of like I see a lot of people and I've been I've been victim to this in the past before as well, letting anybody and everybody just schedule in your calendar whenever and kind of interrupt your flow. So at least for the flow that I've found that works really well to me, and I hear a lot of people this works great for them as well, is to stack their mornings more with time to think and be creative and you know, work on projects and solo things and then stack their afternoons with calls because that's when their energy is starting to wane and they're a little bit more effective there. So I think watching your time and then kind of stacking your projects and tasks in a way that supports you to not have to be also quickly changing from task to task and or from a task to a call to a task, it just can really kill our productivity when we're not watching some of those key things. Following up on that question, from a marketing perspective, how do you draw to genius in yourself and your teams? 
Well, marketing is all about creativity and you can't have creativity in a space of fear and stress, anxiety. And so it's really important, especially in my role, I'm always watching for this and very mindful that my team's workloads feel very manageable and sustainable. One of my friends, Kyle Gold, he talks about how ideally you have your teams operating at 80% all the time so that then when you need that 100%, let's let's push for something extra, they have that energy. And so I've found that that's a very crucial way to look at how we set up our teams of just making sure they have a lot of breathing room, that their workloads are manageable, but also then I think that it's easy, especially in marketing, for it to turn into kind of a production line a creativity production line, which sometimes can take out some of the creativity. And so I've found it's important for us to have ongoing systems and processes in our marketing of where we always put about put out this many emails a month or this many posts a week, or we put out this many types of ads. We have those kinds of fundamentals, but I think it's important to always introduce an element of testing something different and fun and creative on top of those layers. And to do that, even maybe on a quarterly basis to keep that creativity infused into what you're doing. I also think one of the things that kind of kills that creativity and your team staying in their genius zone is too much focus on what competitors are doing. So it's good to have a pulse on that competitor perspective, but it's also really important to stay in your own bubble and get very interested in your own people that you're trying to serve and showing up um, in creative ways for them instead of just trying to mimic and or outdo what competitors are doing. We're speaking with Quinn Curtis, Chief Marketing Officer at Disruptive Advertising. Quinn, is there anything I haven't asked that you'd like to add? Gosh, I I think just cheering everybody on and, and finding your genius zone, finding that joy zone and protecting that, that that is something that, especially as we have new technology like AI coming into the picture with all of our work, it's more and more important to protect what humans and only humans can do, which is a large part of your own creativity and your ingenuity. And so the more that you protect your time and energy to be able to support you to stay in that zone, the more valuable you'll be able to be to the teams that you work with and the companies you're working for to be able to create really lasting, powerful change and movement with your initiatives. Quinn, how can people get in contact with you? Absolutely. So they could definitely find me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect there. And then they could also find me by heading to our company's website, disruptiveadvertising.com. Quinn, thank you very much for joining us today on the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. My sincere thanks to Quinn Curtis. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on over 20 directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCF ORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like Quinn, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red Contact Us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol is on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In our next episode, 72, our guest will be Sari Ibrahim discussing your money. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCFORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thank you.